There's not a hand up, but there's a, just a small PowerPoint presentation to answer any questions and just give you an idea where we're going. Okay. Um, but we can certainly make handouts available after right. the... Uh, Gentlemen, the work session has begun. Thank you. Can we do introductions? And we'll start with um, this young man walking over here. Okay. Sorry. Milton. Julia Tucker, Assembly Council. Paul Luther, Deputy Missile Manager. Kim Hart, Deputy Program Manager for... Mississippi. I'll be very Jackson. And since there's not too many, there's Peterson. Mr. Peterson, we're doing introductions. What is wrong with these men? He's only got one bar. Please introduce yourself. Tim Butler, Purchasing. He's all farm IT. Todd Cooker, IT. John Roberts, Technology Services Manager, IT. Karen Turner, Fire Relations. Mike Gavin, City Manager. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Well, thank you for this opportunity to uh, just do a quick presentation on uh, an upcoming assembly uh, memo that we have on coming forth on the 24th, uh, where we're going to be asking to uh, get approval for Ka the new Kava time collection system. Uh, this system is basically the, the time collection system that will be uh, used in conjunction with the SAP uh, ERP system that we're working towards. I've got a, a, a few, just a few slides here to kind of give you an overview of, of what, it, uh, what we're looking at, uh, what's going to be entailed and incorporated in this particular uh, memo that's coming forward. Um, but then obviously we'd be more than happy to answer any questions you have. And as you heard, we've got purchasing and IT and a variety of other departments here today to answer any questions you may have on where we're going. So, so um, currently uh, our, our plan is, is to uh, go forward with SAP as being our central payroll system um, and all the modules that go along with that. However, they do not have uh, uh, clocks available with SAP. So they have partnered with a company called Kaba. Uh, to basically provide the clocks and also be the, basically the main focus of where employees' uh, punches uh, would be uh, gathered and then incorporated into the system. So the question that we always hear is why Kava with SAP? Um, and listed a couple of reasons here. First on, and probably the biggest one is the interface simplicity. They are a gold medal partner. They are the partner that SAP has. Um, with regards to time collection. So they actually have pre-built and standard, uh, they call them plugins, uh, but basically uh, they're the interface between the Kava software and the SAP software. We were very concerned about uh, having to keep interfaces up uh, on a long-term basis because if one, if the time collection system changed and SAP didn't, you got to go in and change the interface and vice versa. Here, because of their relationship, they ensure that the uh, interfaces between Kava and SAP are always working when upgrades happen. So, and the, no municipal requirements are, are responsible for ensuring that. So that was a, that was a key key component uh, when we talk about interfaces. Uh, interfacing, um, as I mentioned, they have a long-standing prime partnership. They've been partnering with SAP since 1971. Uh, they are their gold medal partner in this particular space. So that was another key factor in our in our decision. They have a proven success and track record of integrating, as I mentioned. Uh, they have that standard interface with CATS, which is the time uh, sheet that's within SAP that everything uh, takes place in, all the business rules or everything. Everything's done in, in SAP, which is a little bit different than, and I know we'll bring up the word chronos, so we might as well bring it up right now. I'll bring it up. Before you continue, I have a quick question, okay, just for clarity. So we are using SAP's module, which we already purchased, correct? The payroll module, that w is correct. That's right, correct. so the only thing that Kava is, is the actual machinery. Machinery and, and a few other little pieces that go along with it, but yes, okay. Mr. Trent. Thank you. Mr. Trent. Now, are they going to people the timesheets with the hours that are expected to be working, and then if they're not here, they come make a change, or are we going to assume they're not there during the hours, and they've got to fill the timesheet daily? Well, those will be you know, work rule processes as we go through, but all the schedule and everything will be maintained within the SAP uh, CATS module. So the schedules will all reside in that particular module. 
and as I mentioned, with regards to Kronos, all the business rules and everything from the union contracts are programmed into Kronos and then filter in through PeopleSoft. This is a little bit different. All the business rules are going to be developed and held in the system of record is going to be SAP. The only thing that Kava is going to do is take the in and out punch through a variety of different mechanisms, and we'll talk about that, and put those, those punches, the in punch and the out punch for the day for an employee, and incorporate that into the system. But SAP is where all the business rules and all the, the payroll and all the, uh, the the work, so to speak, is going to be done. So it's kind of a flip-flop of what you what you're familiar with re with regards to Kronos uh, at this particular point in time. Thank you, Mr. Please continue. Um, as I meant, uh, mentioned, you know, we're trying to get cost containment with some competitive pricing, and we can certainly talk about that. But from a purchasing perspective, we went through several rounds of negotiations with Kava to try to ensure we have the best pricing. But this is kind of the decision that, that we went with. Uh, when we were creating our white paper back in November to be able to do that. So it's a little hard to read, but I just kind of wanted to go, what's, in, what's contained within this Kava proposal that you're going to be seeing going forward? There's some software portions, and I just wanted to kind of to, to tell you what uh, is basically included. Basically, we've incorporated three ways for employees to be able to get their punches in. The first is, as you're familiar with, is a clock. And that would be similar to be ha hanging it on the wall at a variety of different locations. And we have 1,900 licenses, uh, which is our rough estimate of the number of employees when we go live with SAP that will be that could potentially be using a clock. And we'll talk about the clocks in a little bit more here, but that's one way that they can do that. A second way to do that, and we've currently estimated 500, is to use basically their computer or a web terminal to be able to clock in and out. So that's kind of the second way. When they sit down at their computer, they can go into Kava and say, I'm here, boom, or at the end of the day, boom, I'm done, and they can leave. The third way we used it, which, uh, or, or that we're offering through Kava, it, it's kind of what we consider the emergency kind of a thing. It's not really the regular standard, but if an employee is called out either from a utility like uh, AWU or MLP to go directly to a light, you know, a electrical problem or directly to a water main break, or to some of the, the road crew uh, type things from the Muni, that they may not go to a computer or have access to a clock readily. So we've incorporated an IVR, uh, basically a telephone opportunity, with, which has an, uh, a 12 port capability. So 12 employees can call in at any one time and be able to say through their password or whatever, I'm clocking in, I'm clocking out. So the point here I'm trying to make is we basically have provided three different mechanisms for employees to be able to clock in and out, a wall clock, a computer for uh, if, if available and or if they're not available they can they can call in and the nice part about all of these is that employee could do one at the beginning of the day and a totally different one at the end of the day but as long as these are all filtered through Kava those punches will then be uploaded into the SAP system Mr. Training okay tell me how a police officer that's at home gets a call to report immediately to an incident will go into go in the police department and sign into it time clock. So they're going to respond directly to the incident. So police and fire are the two bargaining units that will not be going live on July 1st. Uh, or, uh, they will not be going live when SAP goes live. They will maintain their current teledriver and, uh, uh, and telestaff uh, functionality and the way they do their schedules and everything like that. And we're building an interface between telestaff and SAP. They will not be using Kava in those two bargaining units when we go live. Uh, downstream, after we go live with SAP, we will look at incorporating those uh, those bargaining units into the to the system. But we will have to take those exact same things that you just questioned into consideration prior to us bringing them online. But basically, every bargaining unit, but those two, will be using the system when we go live. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Theron. Thank you, Mr. Training, Mr. Weddleton. So, um, why, why not those two? Um, a couple from complexity, they have extremely complex schedules that even as, the, as Mr. Train mentioned, uh, they don't, they may not have some of the functionality uh, to be able to do it in the police cars. We looked at the terminals they have and those don't link automatically in. Um, plus we're making a big lift here just to get all the rest of the employees on there and we want to make sure that when we do bring them online, we bring them on, that they, they work, they have they're also, um, their schedules are very complex, so we, we want to make sure that we have the telestaff uh, system really does a good job of that. We want to make sure we maintain that functionality at least to begin with. It is our long-term goal, though, since they are hourly employees, that through a period of time, we'll start bringing both fire and police on at that point in time, but only after we're sure we can handle their, 
that, that's kind of a goal. Yeah, I think that would be a pretty good goal uh, to be able to do that. I mean, most likely we bring fire on first because uh, they have uh, they are more fixed sites and we can probably look at them. Police will be the most complicated, and we'll want to make sure when we do that that uh, we've got the, everything lined up in advance to make it happen and make it work for us. Thank you, Mr. Karen. So, on Mr. Trini. Mr. Alden. Kronos, how much money did we waste on that system? Uh, I didn't bring those those numbers with me. I just send me an email. Let me know how much you made because I'm interested in them. And I want to know with Kronos equipment. Do we put it auction? Do we put the dump? Well, I have been told that that equipment would be surplus, but uh, Zal or, so, or Tim would be able to answer that question. Uh, Mr. Trini, yes, you asked me that question the last time, and based on the research, the best we can do is we put it out in the open market on eBay, because the compiler wants to sell it on eBay for 200 bucks. <laughs> we spent, I think, like 2,500 bucks to uh, device. How many years did we buy? We have 20, in, we have currently 20 affixed. We might have one or two additional as extras, but we have 20. So we, have, so we have 20 total currency. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Trini. I'll leave you alone. <laughs> so maybe we can okay. tell them to Kronos. Please continue. So that that's kind of how that so that's a component of what the AMS is you're going to be seeing is the is the software licenses to allow these three different types of, of uh, employee punches to get into the system. In addition to that, the, they have to, the, the consultants or Kaba has to come online to be able to uh, uh, actually do the work. And so they have 160 hours, so there'll be consultants coming online and working. And I have a time schedule here that I'll show you in just a minute. I want to be able to kind of go through that. Um, but so there's a component for the professional services to design the system uh, and, and, and all the interfaces when they're on site. And then lastly is we have the clocks, and I'll go into a little bit more detail on that, but the current uh, purchase is going to be a total of 53 clocks as we, we currently have 20 but we're also bringing on uh, both utilities when we go live in addition to that we want to make sure we have a few extra clocks in case we have uh, some some needs where they go down so that the current purchase order or the current <coughs> request is going to be for a total of 53 clocks if we choose to buy additional clocks for police and fire in the future we have negotiated uh, competitive the same pricing for a period of two years Yes, two years. From the two years. So uh, we 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 negotiated the price we're paying for these 53 for any additional clocks for police and fire that we might need, and we've got a commitment that that price won't go up for a period of time. So that was one of the things we wanted to take in consideration. Mr. Training. Yes. You said that uh, MLP is going to be using this. MLP and AWU will go live so with the rest of the unions. The unions that they're going to be doing this. Um. Is this a bargaining negotiation? Uh, not necessarily. I, I um, uh, the union members are required to keep track of their time, and uh, it's essentially management that decides the device that is used to do that. Um, whatever device we put in place for MLMP or AWU or any other uh, union workforce, we'll have to make sure that it can track and um, uh, Account for time according to the rules in their contract. Thank you, Mr. Abbott. Anything else, Mr. Chairman? Mike, does I does do the union people know this is coming? I think so. Their management certainly does, and I believe they have begun the conversations with their member, with their employees, um, in the various bargaining groups. We'll be starting well before this takes effect, more than a year from now. We'll be working with every union and every department to make sure that the transmit transition is as smooth and seamless as possible. Thanks, Mike. I just want to unfair labor practice, so I want them to know ahead of time what we're doing. Couldn't agree more. Thank you, Mr. Trini. Please continue. So that's kind of what uh, I wanted to give just an idea of what's contained from a cost perspective in the in the proposal that's coming forward. Um, before we go on to the next particular screen, uh, there are some, uh, obviously, some uh, yearly maintenance costs that go with the software and with the hardware that will be contained within the IT uh, budget, just like all normal operating expenses. So that's another component of what that's written in there. In addition to that, uh, there's a, a potential, and, and we're putting it in the, the AMS that's going forward for that we might need a server to run this on. And there's also some cost to affix the clocks with cabling and the actual labor to be able to do that. So those additional, which are more muni requirements, are contained within the AMS memo that's coming forward, along with the, strictly the CABA piece 
uh, that we've been talking about. Any questions? I wanted to kind of highlight that particular piece. Um, you have more to go. Right? There's a couple, two more slides. I didn't see anybody. Yet, okay. So, so uh, that, that, go ahead. So just as a quick picture, this is the Kava terminal, and we've, we we per, we are actually using the terminals just for in and out. That's about as simple as you can possibly do. However, we've pur purchased terminals here that are they're basically the, the most advanced that they have so that if we decide in a year or two that we want to start taking some more self-service functionality, reporting lead balances, uh, employee self-service, any of those kind of things, that we've got terminals that are already capable of doing that rather than buying ones that do not and then have to get, get additional ones later or newer ones later. So. This is basically their, their most advanced terminal that provides all the functionality that we could have or want through the, uh, into the future. Um, one of the questions I get asked, so I'm gonna just throw it out there right now, is, is we have several groups that actually wanna, that have to take their time and, and charge it to different codes. Um, all of that particular uh, cost accounting will be done within SAP within the CAT system. It will not be done at the clock. So we're literally only using the clock as an in and out punch. But this is actually the 9700s are the clocks that we'll be purchasing uh, and being able to do this. We were able, however, to, um, as we go on to the schedule right here, which is on the next slide, um, as, as we mentioned, or as Mr. Abbott mentioned, this is a long-term process. So they initially created a plan that basically says, here's a 14, 16 week implementation timeline. And they're used to going from start to end, providing that service and being able to, to get and basically be done. But that's not what's happening on our particular situation because we are configuring the SAP system. So they need to be able to come in, set it all up, um, but then we need to test, and it's gonna be almost a year later before we go live and actually have employees using this. So through purchasing the uh, negotiations with them, we've set up a, basically a schedule that allows us to buy just a couple of clocks, I think it's three, to begin with, just to do the testing phase, and then we delayed the purchase of the other 50 into the fall. So one, we get the most current technology, and two, we get them when, they're actually, uh, when we actually need them to be able to install. So rather than getting all these, these clocks and so forth. So while this is important, and that's why the 24th is so important, is because we have to get them in and configure and do all this, this work so that when we get ready with realization, which you're familiar with on the, on the SAP side, we can test these clocks along with all the business rules and the payroll aspect. But the major purchase of the clocks is deferred uh, into a later period of time. And as a result of that, we were able to defer our maintenance, I believe, as well. Uh, correct, uh, Tim, for a period of time yes, because, yes, because of that. So it's tied into the clocks purchase. So we, we're, trying to, we're trying to spread our cost out and, and have the, min, the minimal cost uh, as we possibly could on all of these different aspects. Um, but basically, they're going to come on site. They're going to they're going to configure this, our servers and document our policies, design and review everything, install and configure it, do the testing, and then um, the end user live and go training customer support. That's more when we actually go live uh, with the SAP system. But we broke their schedule up uh, to, to to be the most efficient and most effective with our long 55 week schedule that we have. Even though they're, they're, the intention of, that they had was to do this in a four month period. So. Uh, while this is a general slide of what they normally do, we've taken these exact same pieces and we've just spread them out to be most efficient for us. But I wanted to let you know what they're actually, what you're paying for them to come in here. The majority of it's the clocks, but then also they're performing all of this additional work to make sure that the, the, the usage of the clocks with SAP are, in, are, are hand in hand as we go through. Mr. Peterson? Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm wondering, if, is, is there some sort of warranty or maintenance agreement that? comes with, with this um, new equipment? So Tim? Yes, yes, the hardware does have the warranties and in addition to the warranty it is it's annual maintenance. That, we, that, that part of it we do pay for on a daily basis. And that would be for any upgrades to this, the clock software and all that kind of stuff, but I think from with regards to the clock breaking after a certain period, is it, is it one year? Yeah, well, the, the, the warranty is the warranty is one year, but if the clock fails even beyond that point, you know, the, the maintenance that we're paying for is either for repair or replacement. But we would have to pay for additional software upgrades. 
Well, the, the through your normal maintenance of software and your maintenance of the, the hardware with the annual fee that you pay, those pay that includes all of your regular updates that you would be getting that, that, that they would be making to their software or hardware throughout the life of the contract. Thank you, Mr. Case, and please continue. Mr. Edelson. Maybe this is early for this, but pessimistic, but six or seven years ago there was a presentation like this on SAP and it all looked good. There was a timeline oh, and things went crazy. Ago, <laughs> so I mean is there have we what we've learned from that? So this looks good, I assume it's right, but what if it all falls to pieces? I mean is there we have they have to, like the company guarantees they will have us up and running by a certain date. That's well, the piece that we're talking about here is the, is the Kava piece right. and the game of time. Just certainly everything is tied to the SAP ERP right. system. That, that's the key. None of this will happen until the SAP system goes live. So if the system is delayed, then, this will, then the, the, the use of this system will be delayed. We will be using the Kronos clocks and the Kronos way of doing it all as long as it takes until we get the SAP system up and we're able to switch over. So this is the, the critical piece because it pays the toy. There's probably nothing more important than that particular piece. So the nice part about this is we'll be able to ensure after probably 10 weeks that, that this software piece is already working with SAP. That's the key why we're getting this, in, this through the assembly on the 24th so they can come in here, establish it all, and set it up, which is going to be almost a year before we actually use it. So this particular piece, I can rest assured, is going to be working well in advance of the SAP system uh, coming online. So I, can have, I have little concerns about this particular piece uh, not being ready to go when we, when we go live because we've got such an advanced uh, requirement to have it tested and validated and then even if there is a problem we've got just a tremendous amount of time and as I mentioned it, it can't it doesn't get any simpler it's just an, you're taking two punches a day per employee you're not really using the full functionality so if you hopefully can just get those punches up it's about as simple as you can make it with, with this particular service. Okay, thank you, Mr. Thurman. Thank you, Mr. Wells, and Mr. Trainee. Uh, Kronos requires us to use PeopleSoft as part of the Kronos system. It hasn't worked correctly. So once we actually get this system working, PeopleSoft is dead, right? Well, S once SAP is, yeah. is, is up and running, then there'll be a determination of how long we want to keep uh, PeopleSoft alive for a variety of different uh, business reasons. Uh, Kronos, Kronos and Kava will, it, we'll have to figure out how, when we switch over how what pay periods because you, you got a two week pay period you have to figure out we might have to keep Kronos alive for a few extra weeks and so forth because there's a lot of retro pay adjustments that take place and you want to keep them in that system of record um, so I'm sure as we get closer to the go live and the, the discussions with SAP there will be a conversation about how long do we need to keep the Kronos uh, i.e. PeopleSoft portion for just the payroll piece alive so that we can make payroll adjustments and so forth and then at what time do we want to shut that off and most payroll adjustments are made the first two weeks afterwards and then they kind of filter off as you get farther away from that particular time period but there will be a decision made at some point by the administration probably with the recommendation of IT on how long PeopleSoft will be, will be kept up and in what state will it be kept up once SAP goes live. You may figure let the assembly know about this rather than just a decision made by the administration, which is their right. I want to make sure the assembly knows what's going on before doing this. You're not envisioning a problem like we had last year where we had to adjust everybody's pay for an extra week. Remember last year we had that pay problem? My topic was before, before I your got time. here. <laughs> sorry. Okay, thank you, Mr. Train. But, but the pay is going to be, we, we, there will have to be uh, quite a bit of discussion and thought put into it on the pay side because of switching systems and being able to do that because we're not just switching from Kronos to Cabo, we're switching from PeopleSoft to SAP. So I, 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 there will be a lot of planning that will have to take place to make sure that people's pay is handled correctly. And then I'm sure Mr. has all heard about the, the PeopleSoft guy. I don't know how long the, I don't have it to say in how long PeopleSoft will be alive. Okay, please continue. I think this is the last slide. This is the last slide that we have on this particular piece. So I wanted to make it short, but I also wanted to give you an opportunity to ask questions about this in advance of the of the memo coming forward. Any other questions? No? Well, thank you very much, and thank you everybody else for being here. Do you have a comment you'd like to make? I'd like to make a comment. Um, <coughs> there's a perception by you, by the way, I'm Pat Clickers. I'm 
network services low one pole of rivers for the flux themselves. And my team is Can you speak up? <coughs> sorry. Um, my team is responsible for the flux themselves, the cause flux and the <coughs> SAP flux. But um, I think a piece that's missing, or at least it seems like is these clocks do provide staffs or labor savings. Um, we can see it in our own group because we have the test clock. And um, <coughs> I save probably five minutes a day using that clock rather than sitting down on my computer and signing in. And so the clocks that we have in Parks and Rec, facilities, and, um, <coughs> and um, the library, City Hall. City Hall, these clocks save labor time. So they, there's a cost to we, you know, there's cost savings by even having them. So the fact we paid 20, it's actually closer to 2,800 o'clock. But um, the fact we bought those, there is, you know, there's return on investment on those that's already been realized. Thank you, Mr. Training. Just in looking at this, we've talked to the Chief Fiscal Officer of San Diego. They've got 10,000 employees, and they used SAP, but they didn't go to uh, Cobb because they assume their employees are honest. They said, when going to timekeeping, what you're assuming is that employees are all dishonest and you're cheating the system. And it was a moral, morale thing for them. So I just want to make sure we're not falling down a trap that San Diego went into a void. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Training. Any other comments or questions before we adjourn? Thank you again, everybody, for being here.